Hello and welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. I have a few housekeeping announcements before we get started tonight. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You can direct your questions to a specific school or schools by including the name. You can also leave a question for all of our representatives to answer about their programs, majors, offices, whatever it is that you want to know. Your can um, this is just one of many different sessions that are happening, so be sure to sign up for more sessions. Um, we hope that you've enjoyed the programming thus far. Now remember, this presentation is being recorded, as are all of our presentations, so you are able to view them in about a week's time, and it's going to be at that same website where you registered, strivescan.com slash Illinois. And just one real quick reminder, that Q&A button, remember, it's so important. Please ask those questions. Um, since your camera and microphone are off, our panelists cannot see or hear you, but they would love to be able to personalize uh, the knowledge that you're getting tonight. We have five great schools here, and I'm really excited uh, for you all to learn and hear from them. We're going to start off tonight with the University of Wisconsin Lacrosse. Hi, everybody. I'm just going to get my presentation up and then we'll be ready to go. All right. Well, my name is Garrett Silger. I'm one of the new freshman admissions counselors here at the University of Wisconsin La Crosse. Um, welcome. Thanks everybody for participating tonight. Um, there's a lot of things that you guys are going to be going through as you're going through the college search process. A um, little bit about myself. I, uh, used to work in high schools. So I understand a little bit of what you guys are all going through. One thing that I think is really important as you're going through the college search process is not only to make sure that the school is a right fit academically, financially, but to also to see what kind of opportunities there is to do in the outlying city or the town that the college is in. Uh, believe it or not, college students aren't chained up to their college campuses for all four years. You're gonna get out, you're gonna experience internships, part-time jobs, and maybe have a little bit of fun along the way. Um, and La Crosse, Wisconsin is really a great place to be able to experience all the different things outside the classroom that students are looking for. Um, as you can see from a couple of the pictures, there's some great things to do um, outside, to be able to get into the outdoors and experience inside the city of La Crosse. Um, a couple of them are across some great ecosystems that we have around the city of La Crosse. The peaks that you are seeing in some of the pictures, those are called bluffs. Um, they kind of cradle the surrounding La Crosse area. Um, the city of La Crosse is also the largest city on the western coast of the state of Wisconsin, uh, located between the bluffs and the mighty Mississippi River. So being a river town, there's all kinds of great local beaches, all kinds of great boating activities that students can engage in to really make sure that the river, the bluffs, and also the marshland, which you see in that bottom picture, which is located just north of our campus, um, are really embedded inside uh, our college campus. Um, La Crosse is really a college town, has a great college town feel and vibe to it. Um, we welcome anywhere from 15 to 18,000 college students to the city of La Crosse every single fall. Those students are spread out across our three universities, UWL, University of Wisconsin La Crosse, obviously, the Turbo University, which is a four-year private Catholic school on the south side of La Crosse, and we also have a Western Technical College, which is a vocational school in the city of La Crosse as well. All kinds of great local and small businesses in the city of La Crosse. Biology is the largest major that we have on our campus. A lot of our students have an idea of going into the medical field after they graduate. So we have two major medical center centers in the city of La Crosse, Gunnarsson Lutheran, as well as a branch of the Mayo Clinic as well. So to talk, talk a little bit about who makes up the student body at UWL. We're a campus of 10,500 students. Uh, we have about 96, 9,700 undergraduate students on our campus. Um, we usually have an incoming freshman class size of 21 to 2,200 students. We do typically receive anywhere from six to 7,000 applications for those incoming freshman spots, but we're a really nice medium-sized traditional college campus. The average age of our students is between 18 and 23 years of age. Very traditional college campus. Students coming right after they graduate high school to earn their first undergraduate degree. There's a lot of benefits in attending a nice medium-sized institution like UWL, one of them being average class size. Our average class size on our campus is only 28 students. Um, think of the relationships that you're able to form in similar class sizes right now in high school. That opens up a lot of doors for our students on campus. Um, for every 19 students on campus, we have at least one faculty member. Our faculty and staff are incredibly accessible. So when they say that their office hours are such and such a day at such and such a time, you don't have to worry about making an appointment weeks in advance. 
Also, all 1,300 courses we teach in our campus each semester are taught by faculty professors. We don't have any teaching assistants or undergraduate students teaching any courses on our campus. That really speaks to the quality of education that you're going to get from our institution. Um, on campus living, not going to dwell on this too much, but 97% of our freshmen do decide to live on campus. Um, there's a lot of amenities when it comes to living on campus. All of our residence halls are co-ed. We also offer gender inclusive housing, which gives our students the right to have their roommate based on how they identify as an individual and not how they're identified based on their physical biology. We also have five distinct living communities on campus for international and transfer students, also for students who identify as LGBTQ or plus. We also have an outdoor recreation living community. So if you really like getting outdoors, that's a great living community for you as well. We also have a pre-health living community. So if you do have your eye on going into the medical field, like med school or physical therapy school, there's a special living community for you right here on our campus. Um, our campus has experienced a large amount of growth uh, over the past four years. All of the buildings that you see up on the slide have either finished construction or are currently under construction just within the past four years. So that's from our brand new student union to our $83 million Prairie Spring Science Center. This is a science lab only building we don't teach any lectures inside that building to the renovation we did of our workout space on campus, our recreational Eagle Center. We're currently in the process of, process of constructing a new student field house, uh, which is gonna have state of the art facilities uh, for our track and field, basketball, volleyball, and tennis uh, organizations, but also for our exercise and sports science programs as well. We also just finished construction this fall on a brand new College of Business Administration in Whittock Hall on campus. We offer 130 different academic programs on campus spread out across these five colleges and schools. We also have a number of graduate programs as well as doctoral programs on our campus, including a doctoral physical therapy program, which is a nationally recognized, very prestigious program that we have right here on our campus. Let's talk a little bit about how to get into UWL. Um, we break up our admissions criteria into two different factors, primary factors as well as secondary factors. To accommodate a lot of students finding it really hard to take ACT and SATs uh, this last spring, we became a test optional university. So we're always going to take into consideration the classes you took as well as your GPA, but know that you can be admitted to UWL without ever needing to send us your ACT or your SAT scores. A lot of schools that you're going to be meeting with or talking to utilize the Common App. We only utilize the UW System application. You can find it there and the dates to apply there as well. Class to attend. Don't have a lot hear of it? this, but if you do have questions, feel free to reach out to me on uh, how to attend. I'll put my contact information in the awesome. chat. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Garrett. I know the six minutes just fly by. There's always more to share. So thank you so much for um for presenting on the University of Wisconsin Lacrosse. Our next school is going to be Rockford University. Let me share my screen here. Maybe. All right, hello everyone. My name is Kat. I am an admission counselor at Rockford University. I love Rockford. So the enthusiasm I have here with you guys is definitely my real enthusiasm. So let's get started. Your future campus, I just want to start out with the fact that this is not a stock photo. This is actually a picture of the scenery on our campus. Rockford is the third largest city in the state of Illinois. So being able to see views like this without leaving where you're living and being in your backyard is really cool. We are located on 150 acres of a park-like campus. We are a smaller school. We have about 1,300 students from around the country and around the world, but you have that acreage space. So if you're somebody who wants to have your space be alone, get that outdoor experience to yourself or not be on top of other people, this is the place for you. And then if you want to be really close to your friends and be spending the time right next to them, that opportunity is available as well. We have 10 different residence halls and they definitely vary. So we have our small houses, which is a closer, more intimate living space. And then we have our traditional dorm rooms where you're gonna be mixed in. We're gonna have male floors and female floors. You're gonna have opportunities to live in singles, super singles, suites and double rooms. We all also charge a standard price for all of our rooms. So there is not a tier depending on what you're looking for. But on top of those residence halls, we have free parking and free laundry on the slide. One of the things we pride ourselves in is not nickel and diming our students. You're coming here for an education and we want to provide you the things you need to be successful. 
for me, air conditioning means success and all of our residence halls are air conditioned as well. We have a 10 to 1 student faculty ratio. You see that nearly 1300 students and 10 to 1. That's easy for us to attain here. We also do not have TAs teaching our classes. Your faculty members are going to get to know you and they're going to get to know you well and they're there to support you. We are a D3 school, so we have 12 different athletic programs and a competitive esports team. We just got done redoing our facility with all of our workout equipment and our gym space. It's really nice. It's really up to date and awesome for our athletes. We have tons of resources on campus. So our Center for Learning Strategies is going to be a tutoring and support center. My favorite part about that is it's not just people who know the subject helping you that can't relate to you. Majority of our tutors have actually taken the courses that they're tutoring in, and they're able to have that one-on-one -on -one connection with students. You know, this is what you need to do to be successful. This is how we can get you through this class. They also have group and peer tutoring as well as test taking support. Our Career Services Center is awesome. Like I already said, Rockford is the third largest city in the state of Illinois. So our Career Services Center does a good job with connecting students to local businesses, companies. Um, we're known as Screw City, so there's a lot of manufacturing here. We have a brand new business center. So our students are getting really awesome experiences in the classroom and getting connected to awesome people and places outside of the classroom as well. They also help with resume writing, cover letter writing. Um, there are opportunities if you're needing business professional attire for interviews, internships, things like that, that we can assist you in finding those on campus. Our Lang Health Center is awesome. We have a nurse and a doctor that are rotating on campus. They're here to take care of students. My favorite part about the Lang Health Center is if you're not feeling well and you call them, they will actually deliver a meal to your room. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm sick, I don't want to get out of bed. It's not happening, but I do still want to eat. So it's nice that they can do that. We do offer study abroad and we have four sister programs and those sister programs allow our students to have the same tuition rate as they would if they were on the Rockford campus. Study abroad is definitely an affordable option. And for those opportunities that students wanna to go to but may not feel they can afford, we do have our student opportunity fund. So that's something that students are able to apply for and that may look like applying for funds to pay for a passport to study abroad or work on ground transportation, getting from the hotel to where you're staying. A lot of our theater students will use that fund to get to see a program or a play in the city of Chicago. Or if a business student wants to go to a conference in town or out of town, say somewhere in Madison, it can help fund those options. We have over 80 different majors, minors, and concentrations, so there really is something for everyone, and that Student Opportunity Fund helps you get off campus and find a little bit extra if you're looking for it. Our admissions requirements are awesome. We are on a rolling basis, which I think is great. It is never too late. If you love Rockford and you can see this being your home for the next few years, apply. There is time for it. Our application is also free. Free is my favorite cost. Again, it comes back to that not wanting to nickel and dime our students. We know you want an education. We know it's going to cost you something to get that education so the most successful we can make it. We do. We've got a 2.65 GPA requirement, but we do a holistic assessment of our application. So what does that mean? That means we're looking at more than the GPA. It means we're looking at every single bit of information you're providing us. What I always like to tell people is the more you tell us, the more we know about you. So our tuition and fees, you see this big sticker price and it looks a little bit scary. It's not, I promise. 99% of our students receive financial aid. We do give academic scholarships to all of our students. So you do have opportunities to fund the education right off of the bat. The small ones add up. When you're looking at scholarships, don't necessarily start with the super, super high ones. You can start with those lower ones because those $250, $500 scholarships, they do make a difference as you continue to go through. And I'm sure everyone here today will say complete your FAFSA. I'm going to make this last little bit quick here about Rockford University. But like I said, third largest in Illinois. We're about 90 miles from Chicago, Illinois, Madison, and Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So what does that mean? That means that when you want to get off campus, you have opportunities in the area, but you also have three very big cities, very close, where you can go have fun, enjoy, explore. Some of my pro sports, if we have any sports fans here, our minor league hockey team actually was officially purchased by the Blackhawks this week, which is super cool. We love our sports in Illinois. And then in town, we've got restaurants, theaters, coffee shops. We're a big, small business friendly area. So you're going to find your major chain restaurants like your Chili's and your Buffalo Wild Wings. We have two of both, but we also have local coffee chains and restaurants as well. If you have any questions, I'm going to drop my information in the chat. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Kat, for presenting Rockford University to everyone tonight. Our next school is going to be McKendra University. Hey, everyone. I hope that you are all having a fantastic day. Um, 
Just one second. I am having a little bit of a technical issue here. So my sincerest apologies. That's all right, Alexander. We will get all that right away. So everyone, um, as I said, my name is Alexander McWhort. I'm an assistant director of admission at McKendree University. We are a small liberal arts university located in Lebanon, Illinois, which is about half an hour east of downtown St. Louis. We have about 1,300 students and that are undergraduate, first um, undergraduate students on our campus from 40 states and 40 countries with an overall enrollment of about uh, 2,500 students. Our student body, um, a majority of them come from Illinois and then Missouri, since we're about half an hour from downtown St. Louis. After that, a lot of students from the mid throughout the Midwest and from the coastal states as well. And we do enjoy that because it provides you with an opportunity to meet with other students, learn a lot about um, people from various backgrounds. And with students coming from six continents, it's really great to also, you know, have the opportunity that you think you may never meet someone from whether it's Ghana or New Zealand, but you're going to meet them and have class with them. Uh, we are in the small town of Lebanon, Illinois, which has about 4,400 people in it. It is a nice small town, uh, providing with opportunities to escape from the large city, like city life of St. Louis and study and really get to know people. Um, at McKendree, we have over 50 academic programs across one college, two schools, and one division. Um, we have almost every academic program you could imagine. And some of our more popular programs are sport management, K through several K through 12 education licensures, as well as um, biopsychology, cyber defense, cybersecurity, a whole lot of everything. Um, we are a liberal arts university, so you will take classes from all uh, disciplines, and it's really going to teach you how to think, not what to think. Our average class size is only 14, so we do like providing you with the opportunity to really know your professors. They are there to guide you throughout the way. Every course is faculty taught as well. Um, so you are having these mentorship opportunities and it opens the, the gates for you for research and internships at any given in any given year, about 50% of our students will complete an internship. And this really helps our students because we have a 98% postgraduate success rate. So within six months, you are almost guaranteed to be working in the field of your choice or in graduate school, continuing your education. You can scan the QR code here to also um, kind of see our whole list and our whole academic catalog. Beyond academics, we have a whole lot to offer. Um, we are a residential campus, so you will be living on campus most of your time. Uh, but beyond that, we have over 80 student organizations on campus. So everything from fraternity and sorority life to visual and performing arts groups, various study abroad opportunities, um, outdoors clubs, just anything you can imagine. And being half 30 minutes from Bush Stadium, you have an easy escape, whether it is to catch a ball game or hockey, uh, go to the zoo, several museums, a lot of fantastic food and concerts in St. Louis. But beyond that, we do have several athletic programs. We are Division Two, NCAA Division Two, and the Great Lakes Valley Conference. And we have athletic programs, including football, soccer, baseball, women's lacrosse, bowling even, uh, bass fishing, swimming and diving. So we do enjoy providing students that opportunity to branch out, support your team, and also uh, kind of watch some, some sports you may never have seen. For McKendry, we want to make the application process as simple as possible for you. Um, this is the process at a glance. So when you are ready, if you're a senior, you can apply today. Um, if you're a junior or lower, once you are entering senior year that summer, you can submit a free application to McKendry or use the common application since we are on the common app. We are currently test optional. So you all we need is your high school transcript. We do not require um, 
an essay, but we always ask for a personal statement and maybe a letter of recommendation. That way we can get to know you as a prospective student more and help guide you through this process and really help you decide if McKendry is a fit or not for you. Um, come October, you, add, you fill out the FAFSA and you add us to it. Um, that way we can really work on financial aid opportunities. Throughout the winter, we will start sending out financial aid packages to you as a student. And during that time, you'll, since we are a small university, you'll get follow up from me or my peers in the admission office. And we're gonna walk through this financial aid with you and anyone who's helping you with this decision making process. So you can really understand the affordability about McKendry. And then May 1st, you gotta make that decision. We have several academic scholarships. Once you have a 2.75 GPA or higher, you will start being eligible for academic scholarships upon admission ranging from 10 to $17,000. Beyond that, we offer several additional scholarships, grants, um, things like that. And we have our direct total cost here. Uh, we have a high, we're about $44,000. We know that's a high number, but don't be scared. We offer several forms of aid to cut that cost down significantly. I have my- awesome. Alexander, yep, I'm going to your contact info. Great, thanks. Great, thank you for sharing um, for sharing McKendry University with everyone. So we have now heard from three great schools. We have two more to go. So just a reminder to put those questions in the Q&A. You can double check on something you heard, ask something for a school that's coming up. And also don't forget to check the chat for that contact info. And now um, I'm excited to introduce our next school. We'll be hearing from Beloit College. Thank you very much, Jennifer. My name is Karin Smith. I am the Midwest Regional Admission Manager at Beloit College. We are a private, very traditional liberal arts college, 175 years old, established before the city of Beloit or the state of Wisconsin was founded. Um, for students from Illinois, the Chicago area, I think it's important for you to know we're just 90 minutes north of downtown Chicago, right on the Illinois-Wisconsin state line. We're also less than an hour south of Madison, where University of Wisconsin is located and about an hour west of Milwaukee, the largest city in the state of Wisconsin. All of those places are accessible via public transportation. Um, responding to the pandemic. Oh, yeah, hasn't this been our life for the last year? Uh, last spring was a challenge none of us could have anticipated. At Beloit, we quickly determined that not only were we not gonna be stymied by this, but that COVID would serve as a catalyst to create an even better experience for our students. The result for us was the Beloit Action Plan, which is a suite of academic, personal, and financial programs that we quickly launched for our entire community. And we didn't only create a better experience for our students, we did it with our students. And I think this is what really sets Beloit apart from most any other school in the country. It was a strong group of students that convinced us that the best way for us to succeed at being on campus in person was to allow our students to be the experts on how to make this work best. The result was a realistic and safe set of behavioral guidelines that you can still see on our website, developed by students for students and delivered from students to students and to the entire Beloit community. And it has worked. The vast majority of our students have studied safely and successfully in person for the entire academic year. We are a place built on and supported by collaborative relationships. As you'll see here, some numbers. Um, we are a very diverse community, both in identities and interests. Per capita, Beloit College is the most diverse school in the state of Wisconsin. Like some of my colleagues here tonight, we have small classes, personal attention, creative areas of study, and ways to study. We do not ask our students to make a decision about a major until the end of their sophomore year. The single most popular major for our students coming in the door is what we call multi-interested. And you'll see that even with that, one out of three of our students will double major. The building that you see here, we call the powerhouse, and it opened just a year ago. It's actually a 120,000 square foot facility that serves both as a student center and as an athletic facility. And it's literally 
a repurposed coal energy power plant that had been sitting empty in the state or uh, in Beloit for the last several years. We purchased it, we did it, and it now serves as the hub of our campus. Um, we are a residential campus. 95% of our students live on campus and are with us for all four years. When we are reviewing a student's application, we're looking not only at what they're gonna contribute in the classroom, but also what they're gonna contribute outside the classroom. So we tend to be a very busy place with lots of extracurricular opportunities for our students. Um, we are a division three school. We have 18 varsity athletic teams, special interest housing clubs and, and activities and intramurals. About 50% of our students will also study abroad. This is two facets of our Beloit Action Plan, as I mentioned before. One is the Advanced Mentoring Program. And as I mentioned before, we're a community built on relationships. And so through the Advanced Mentoring Program, students are matched with their first faculty mentor within three days of committing to Beloit. So while they're still seniors in high school, our advisors work with students on transitioning from high school to Beloit. Also, a student's, oops, a student's advisory group becomes their first circle of peers um, that they start to get to know even before arriving. And the AMP program guides students to making the best of their college experience and planning for the future over the course of their first two years. Then students will often start to transition to what we call career channels, which is designed to help broaden expertise and professional an area of focus, such as those listed on the screen. Channels transcend majors. So we will have a number of students from various majors involved in each of these different career channels, and they promote learning from various perspectives. Channels activities include internships, job shadowing, resume building, interviewing, and ultimately career success after Bullet. Here are admission standards. We are like many schools, a school that practices holistic admission or comprehensive application review. Most students being admitted to Beloit each year are pretty solid B students in high school, taking some honors and AP classes. In addition to a student's high school, high school transcript, we also consider um, their writing ability that we see via the essay that they submit, letters of recommendation, extracurricular involvement, we do not consider standardized test scores. And so Beloit is a place that's been both historically and proudly test optional for a number of years. Here's my contact information and I'll put it in the chat as well. I've worked with students in the Chicago area um, and Minnesota. I don't know if there's any Minnesota students here right now, um, but I look forward to talking with you more. Thank you so much, Karen, for sharing Beloit College tonight. All right, we are now going to be hearing from Bradley University. Good evening. One moment here while I get everything set up. All right. So my name is Connor King. I'm with Bradley University. Um, I am a three-year admission counselor, actually a Bradley graduate myself, and I am born and raised in Peoria, Illinois, where Bradley is located. So as you can see here, in right in the central part of Illinois, Bradley is located uh, between Chicago and St. Louis, about three hours from each, each version. Um, and then as you can see, separated by Interstate 74, we're also right in between Indianapolis and the Quad Cities. So very centrally located to a number of large cities in the Midwest and in Illinois particularly. Um, so offers a lot of opportunity and benefits for students. So Bradley is a mid-sized university. So not small, not too big, but a mid-sized university of nearly 6,000 students. So we like to talk about how we are more personalized than a much larger university, but also more opportunistic than some of your smaller universities. So we use the tag phrase mid-sized big difference. We are currently at an average class size of about 17 students per class, and that would be specifically once you start to get into your major courses. Um, all of our classes are taught by faculty, so there are no teacher's assistants or graduate level students teaching courses, all taught by hired faculty. Um, currently, we have over 185 different academic programs and majors on campus and a student to faculty ratio of 12 to 1. 
These are the five colleges that Bradley is made up of. There is technically a sixth, which we'll get to in just a moment. But as you can see, we offer the Foster College of Business, Slane College of Communication and Fine Arts, the College of Education and Health Sciences, Caterpillar College of Engineering and Technology, and the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. So we'll dive a little further into each one of these. In the Foster College of Business, you'll see some of the, the majors or popular majors that you'll find in this college. I wanna use this time to talk about our brand new building on campus. That's a picture from inside of it, the new Business and Engineering Complex or uh, Convergence Center. Um, so again, business and engineering students are working out of a brand new $100 million building that was just finalized about a year or so ago and is now fully operational on campus. So again, some of these majors would include accounting, finance, marketing. If you're looking to get into potentially entrepreneurship or management and leadership, um, those types of things are what, are fine, what would be found in our Foster College of Business. The Slane College of Communication and Fine Arts is where I spent most of my time as a sports communication major at Bradley and then working uh, for about four years in professional sports. So if you're looking to get into something with television or theater or music, um, interactive media, our popular uh, game design program is something that's really taken off. Um, art and design, those types of things are found in our College of Communication and Fine Arts. College of Education and Health Sciences includes our direct admit nursing program. So that's one of our well-known or um, most popular majors on campus. Um, you would certainly want to apply early and we'll talk about that as we get into the application period. But some other things you'll find in this college are the education college along with our physical therapy program, which is a undergraduate program of kinesiology and health science, which leads into a graduate level program, um, meaning you can do a full seven years at Bradley. Our Caterpillar College of Engineering and Technology is also another popular major on campus. Uh, many students come to Bradley for engineering. So you'll see again with the new building there in the picture, um, some of the different engineering uh, options that you would have. And last but not least, our biggest college on campus, the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. You'll find many of uh, the majors that we haven't talked about yet in this college and many of our minors as well housed here in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. The technical sixth college that I like to mention is our academic exploration program, which is offered to students who are undecided. So you come in as a Bradley student undecided with some uh, some help and some um, exploratory types of courses that will help you find your niche. About one in every six Bradley students start this way. The only program you cannot start this way as is a nurse. So this is a picture of our campus that is walkable within 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes or so from corner to corner. About 90% of our freshmen do live on campus and you'll see in this picture all the different icons, meaning that this is available on our website. So you can actually click on each one of these individual buildings to see what they are. So again, walkable in five to 10 minutes from corner to corner, which allows for you to get right out of bed and go to campus um, for class and you don't have to get on a bus or ride a bike across campus. Student life-wise, we have over 240 different academic programs and majors. So if you're interested in getting involved in religious life, um, Greek life, club sports, intramurals, um, honors programs, all kinds of things, uh, you can do that here on campus. So again, very, um, very opportunistic in the things you can do along with the personalization in the classroom. Also wanna mention we are a division one school. So all of our, um, all of our athletics programs are division one. So um, plenty of opportunity to go see our men's basketball team that plays downtown in our Peoria Civic Center um, or our uh, Bradley baseball team that plays on a minor league baseball field for our minor league Peoria Chiefs. So in regards to the admission and some financial assistance opportunities, as you've heard from many other schools, um, you would certainly want to file the FAFSA in October when it opens up. So as a um, senior of, in high school, you'll want to look into filing the FAFSA for any financial assistance. And then, of course, each year beyond that, um, for anyone currently looking for any idea of what it may cost to attend Bradley, I would recommend using our um, cost estimator on our website, which will give you an idea of where you currently may fall on this scale. We do range from anywhere between fourteen and $20,000 a year in terms of academic scholarship. We do use the Common App and our own app, which is free of charge. And we currently do have visits available on campus. So you can use this URL to find that. Again, my name is Connor King with Bradley University and please feel free to ask me any questions. I'll drop my info in the chat. Hey, thank you so much, Connor, for presenting on Bradley tonight. Um, well, we have reached the end of the formal part. We've learned about five great schools tonight. I hope it's piqued everybody's curiosity 
um, to learn more after today. So I wanna give everyone a few minutes to make sure to be able to grab that contact information from the chat so you can follow up with these awesome representatives and their colleagues. And also um, to just let everyone think for a minute about any Q&A questions you might wanna add in there. Um, so while we're doing that, I'd love to have each representative come back on camera. We are gonna do one live Q&A question together uh, at least. So um, I would love to hear from each of you about um, your favorite or the favorite of students, your campus community, um, some sort of event, program, or tradition. Just give a little more insight into that experience um, on your campus. We're going to go in the same order that you presented. So we're going to start with Garrett from UW-La um, Crosse, and then we'll go through each of you in order. When the representative ahead of you finishes, feel free to just turn on your microphone and answer. It's a little more casual than the, um, than the earlier part of the program. So Garrett, thanks for starting. Yeah, no problem. There's um, a lot of really cool student-led events that happen on our campus. Um, I want to be um, very cognizant of the time that we're living in and just mention that there are some great student activists on our campus that are really um, speaking up and letting their voices be heard uh, due to you know, the Dare Chauvin trial that's happening. There was a protest on campus last year after George Floyd was murdered um, in light of Dante Wright being murdered recently. There's just great student activity and great student activists on campus that are really speaking up and letting their voices be heard. Um, so encouraging that of our students is definitely something that is very treasured and prized on our college campus. Hey everyone. So um, on the Rockford campus, we are definitely, for being a small school, we are mighty with events. Um, one of the coolest student activities that I think we have every year, it really unites our students together, is we actually do a big campus-wide Thanksgiving celebration. So those are always themed. One year was Harry Potter themed. One year was Beauty and the Beast themed. We did have owls. So we definitely take it um, to the extreme with the theme, with the fun, with the food. There's always food here and faculty and staff and their families, along with our students attend those events too. So it's a very inclusive campus. Um, we feed you a lot and we give you really cool ways to get to know those people outside of the classroom. All right, um, a really cool event uh, at McKendree University that I enjoy with students. It's called the Academic Excellence Celebration. Every April, there is a day during the week that classes are canceled and it gives students the opportunity to present research that they've done throughout the year. I, the bands are able to perform some of the work. You have music recitals. Uh, the speech and debate team put on also a really cool uh, expo on like how, how it works. So it's always neat to see that, uh, but also being able to see what, what really it is that students are able to do and what it is, whether it's connections, with professors or the connections that they have um, within the community and what they're able to do and show what their educational experience is really um, proving. Okay, so traditions of the late. Well, we have two outdoor concerts each year, one in the fall, one in the spring. But in my opinion, the coolest tradition at the late is something we call spring day. Um, it's not on the calendar. Um, but after a long winter on a day that's anticipated to be a really beautiful day to be outside, an alert goes out to our students that all classes are canceled and they're encouraged to sleep in and then spend the rest of the day outside. Um, and there are all kinds of outdoor activities for students to take advantage of. There is always every year a kind of a, a behind the scenes, when do you think it will be guessing game that goes on and I would imagine some a little bit of illegal betting, not money, but fun. Um, and so it's just kind of a celebration of getting through winter. Um, those of you in the Chicago area know what that feels like and the rebirth um, that we all get to experience in the spring. And at Bradley University, uh, we have something pretty unique called the lighting of the bee. We do this at homecoming. So since we don't have football on campus, unfortunately, um, we do revolve our homecoming around our soccer team. So um, every fall in September or October when homecoming occurs, there's a large bee that is put up on top of our Bradley Hall that is lit up once it gets dark enough. Um, so there's some fireworks and just a fun time, food and all kinds of good stuff 
Um, and then of course the soccer game. So a pretty fun, unique opportunity at Bradley. I always love this question so much because every, every school, it's a different answer. It's a different type of event. It's a different type of experience or insight into the campus culture. Um, and it's so fun to hear. Um, and I hope that all of our attendees, again, want to check it out and, um, you know, something resonated maybe with the school that you were coming here that you already heard about, but maybe your curiosity has been piqued to check out a few more schools now that you know a little bit more about them. Well, we have reached um, the end of our time together tonight. So first of all, I just want to say thank you to all of these admissions representatives for not just sharing those facts and figures in those past six minutes, but just your passion for the student experience in and out of the classroom. Um, to all of our attendees, whether you're watching live or on recording, these are amazing resources to answer your questions, to build relationships, and they love what they do. So I hope that you'll use them as a resource as you and your family navigate the college uh, search and decision journey. Now for the housekeeping. When you close your window tonight, there's gonna to be a link to a very quick four question survey. It's just four questions. We'd appreciate any feedback that you could provide and thank you for taking the time to do that. Again, this is just one of many sessions that have been hosted for Illinois students and we still have another round to go. So we hope that you will sign up to learn about more great schools. And in about a week's time, you'll find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings available for you to watch again, to share, at the same website where you register, strivescan.com slash Illinois. So thanks again, everyone, for taking time out of your day to be here. Um, we wish you all the best as you find your college home. Thanks again and have a great night.